guys, I just got back off the backpacking trip and I've cleaned everything up, dried everything out. I'm thinking about putting everything away now. And I thought I'd do a backpack video, what's in my pack. I've had a couple friends ask me about it. Uh, one of them's new to hiking. He's never done it. And I was just curious about what I carry and you know how to get started. The other one is new to hiking and he's carrying a 30 pound pack and he's just having a miserable time with it. He wants to know how to bring his weight down. And I'm no expert. I've only been doing it about three years now. But I started with a 30 plus pound pack and I can tell you it's no fun carrying that. So I've been able to bring my pack weight down and a lot of that is due to down quilts. They're a lot lighter, less bulky. They compact really well. I had a huge sleeping bag with my other pack. It just took up half the pack. You can't compress it because it's synthetic. And the way to bring your weight down and, and is to bring your volume down as well. So I'm gonna start out with what I was wearing and then I'll move on to what's in my pack. And when I'm done, I've got some gear, depending on the weather and the situation or the trip I'm going on. If it's more of a base camp trip, there's some luxury items I might take with me. But uh, I'm gonna start off with what I'm wearing. And the first thing is, my shoes. In Florida, I like wearing trail runners. And the reason is they drain. There's, they're mostly the shoe is made of mesh and when I'm traipsing through puddles, the water will drain out and allow my feet to start drying. These are made by Asics. They're gel attack trail runners. And I've had them probably two years now and I, I really like them, they're comfortable. Yeah, but I'm a tennis shoe guy. I, I love wearing tennis shoes, so this is perfect for me. But I, I recommend trail runners for hiking. I like them. I don't like waterproof shoes. The water can just get in there, and you, then you're just sloshing around in water all day in your shoes, and that's just miserable to me. So this is the most important thing. You're carrying everything on this right here. So the next thing is these are Columbia fishing pants. And I'm a fisherman, I kayak fish, so I have clothes that can go back and forth to both sports. These don't have the cargo pockets, which I like. My other kayak, I got a couple other pair that have the cargo pockets. I like those better, but these are lightweight. They're a nylon material. And I like wearing uh, convertible pants too. I can just zip the legs off and wear them as shorts if I want to. Uh, these have kind of a liner in them too, uh, which is nice. The pockets are made of the same material really lightweight when it gets wet it, it dries really quickly as far as clothing you don't you want to stay away from cotton clothing if cotton gets wet it just never wants to dry so cotton is bad for to me any outdoor activity uh, because there's always a risk of hypothermia and you want your clothes to dry to be able to dry quickly especially if it's cold out so I really like these kind of pants Next thing I wear is this short sleeve hiking shirt. And this one's made by Starter. I got it at either Target or Walmart, but it's made of polyester, uh, very breathable. Again, it dries quickly. Next thing I wear is, if it's kind of cool, I'll wear this long sleeve microfiber shirt. Again, this is made out of a, a polyester material. I think my wife got this at Bell's and I have several Fishing shirts like this, poly, uh, microfiber, polyester, they dry very quickly. So, all right, let's move on to the pack. Start out with the pack itself. This is a ULA Ohm 2.0. And I can't tell you how much I love this pack. This pack carries exceptionally well. Pack weighs right at two pounds, and you could even shave some of that weight off. They have these hoops here, which are just for resting your hands. I kind of like that. Sometimes just rest your hands on there while you're walking is nice. They've got some, uh, you know, shock board on here. You could probably take that off. You didn't. There's some pockets inside, a hydration sleeve you could take out if you wanted to shave even more weight. If you don't use a bladder, I left all that in there uh, because I use it. So it's got 
it's a 60 liter pack and I love that it's got all these pockets on it especially this outside pocket I can hold a ton of gear in this pocket right here which I do you can see it's bulged out there it's got these stretchable pockets on the side they can hold quite a bit on both sides another feature I like about this pack is these cords right here my other pack came with straps and they just put way too much strap on there and it was hanging off the pack and I really I, I cut some of it off just because it was you know excessive but this is nice to just use a little bit of cord and it you know you can loosen it or set your pack up to compress the, uh, the load which is nice I'll start with what I carry in these front pockets right here these things are huge it's another reason I love this I mean I can't even fill these pockets right here there's so much room in them but on the right side here this is stuff that I access a lot so I keep it on my right hand side I'm right handed so I just I do it that way but this is my bandana and this has a multitude of uses I can use it as a sweat rag to wipe my sweat off I use it when I'm filtering water in my hydration bladder I can just put that on there and it'll catch all the, the floaties out of the water and and then my filter will get the rest out I've even used this on the last hike it was a little warm out I poured water on this and tied it around my head and I mean it was just great cools you right off uh, I've used it to you know wipe my pot out or whatever when I'm cooking so like I said I just I, there's a lot of uses for this right here next thing is I've got my compass never go out in the woods without at least a compass it can save your butt even if you have a GPS carry a compass this is a Silva it's not an expensive one but it does the job Next thing is I got some bug recon here, and I probably don't need to carry this bottle. This bottle is a little heavy, but it's what I have, so I threw it in there. It's Repel. It's got deep, which is probably not good either. So, next thing is my headlamp, and this is an Energizer headlamp. I think it's a Trail Finder. This is the second one I bought. My other one I've had six years. I was using it for fishing and hiking. And I recently, it was so good, I just went and bought another one just to have for hiking. So this one's kind of brand new. The other one has laid in my kayak and salt water and everything else, and it's still going strong. Uh, so for a $15 headlamp, to me, this is all you need right here. It's got several modes on it, too. Even the night vision mode, so. Nice headlamp. Next thing is, I carry some sunscreen, chapstick, my lips get dry. Just got a little tube of chapstick here. And that's it in that pocket. <clears throat> Next pocket here is, I carry a little bit of paracord, paracord for whatever use I need it for. Next thing is reading glasses, and they're in a little case here. I gotta have reading glasses, especially for reading my phone. Next thing is, I've got this little AccuRite temperature gauge. I can hang this on my ridge line. And it's a luxury item, I don't have to have it, but it's nice to know what the temperature is, what the low, it has a high and low for 24 hours. And $6 at Walmart, it's not that heavy, so I carry it along. Next thing is I carry some couple spare batteries for my GPS. And that's it in that pocket. And we'll move on to the front here. On this strap right here is my Mora knife. And I believe this is the clipper. Very good knife. I bought it off of Amazon. It's like a $12 knife. And I put this little striker on it here for starting fires. And I've got just, it's wrapped around in Velcro and fastened on there. And I just hang it with a carabiner off of here. The next thing is my GPS. 
again, don't have to have a GPS, but when I'm out there, it's nice to at least reference where you're at if you're a little, get a little confused. And I can download loops on here when I, for whatever trip I'm going on. That's basically what I do. I just take it off my base camp, put it on the unit, and that way, whatever loop I'm on, I can just at least know where I'm at and get a reference. So I like carrying a GPS. And that weighs about six ounces with the battery, so it's not that heavy. Side pocket here. I carry two water bottles. The first one is a Gatorade bottle. I think a 16 ounce Gatorade bottle, wide top. I carry water in this, but when I'm in camp, I use this bottle to mix, mix drinks. I'm really starting to like Country Time Lemonade, so I use this and mix it in here. The other one is just a smart water bottle, and it's got this little cap on here. I like the little flip-up cap. And by the way, this cap will fit on the other bottles. You can't get this, you can only get this cap on this size water bottle, but if you get a one liter, the cap, you can take it off of here and it'll fit on a one liter. So that's my other water bottle. On this side, I've got my spoon for eating. And it's just a Lexan spoon, these are nice. I think you can get these at Walmart for a dollar. So I carry one of those. And then I have my cook kit. But the outside is reflective because I made a koozie. And you can cook your food in here, put it in the koozie 20, 25 minutes, and rehydrate your food, and you're good to go. The pot is a pot that I found for $5. This is a stainless steel. This is actually 11 millimeter. It's in between the IMUS of 12 and 10 millimeter because it's an 11 millimeter pot. But got it off Amazon, came with a lid. And the nice thing about this pot, if I set it on my stove and I don't have the flame licking up the side near the handle, when this is boiling, I can actually grab the handle and not burn myself. Really nice pot. I think it weighs like 2.8 ounces when I weighed it, so it's really lightweight. This is my coffee filter. I'm a big coffee fan. I do not like instant. I've tried them. There's a couple that's okay, but I don't do coffee. I don't do instant coffee. This is made by GSI, and it's called a Java Drip. You just Flip it onto your cup, put your coffee in there, pour your boiling water over, and it's just like the coffee you get at home. Just pour it in there slowly so it drips like your drip, drip maker at home. And that was 10 bucks well spent to me. This is my stove. This is an NSR. It's not a pocket rocket, it's actually a micro rock, rocket. Pocket rocket's about $30. This I spent $60 on. It's a little bit lighter, and I love this stove. I can boil water sometimes in less than two minutes. This is my coffee cup. Like I said, I love coffee, so I like having a cup just dedicated to coffee. I got this at Bill Jackson's. It had a little carabiner handle. I took the handle off of it. Uh, it's made of stainless steel. You can get lighter cups out there, but it's a little eight ounce cup. It's good enough for me. And it's not that heavy. I think it's probably three ounces, a little, low, a little more than three ounces. And this is just a uh, beer can koozie that I cut down to fit it. Kind of keeps the coffee hot in there. So I like that. Move on to uh, the front pocket here. This is my poncho. This is a frog top poncho, and I've converted it, done some modifications to it, put some shock cord through the channels on the end, made an undercoat protector. I'm not going to go through that because I've already done a video on that, and if you want to know about this, you can watch the video. But this is my tarp. 
This is 23 ounces of heaven right here. I love this part. This is a Warbond Superfly. Comes equipped with doors. If I'm in rainy weather, I can pitch this in storm mode, close off the doors, and I'm high and dry. It's like being in a big tent. When I'm not, when it's fair weather, I can I have shock cord on the tie-outs. I can clip the doors inside to each other and it turns it basically into a regular hex tarp, which is nice. So love this tarp. I have it in some uh, camouflage. It's not snake skins. I made a one long python snake skin that just goes all the way across, sucks my tarp up, and then I carry it in the uh, stuff stack that it came in. But uh, I love this tarp. This is my state bag. This is a tree strap strap. <clears throat> this is an extra tree strap I carry. Not necessary, but if I need extra suspension for one, I've got an extra strap in here. The main reason I carry it is because I hate setting my pack on the ground and you're trying to get stuff out of it, it's falling over. So I wrap this around the tree and suspend it from the tree. And then I take this carabiner right here, which is an extra carabiner I carry, clip it to there and then I clip it to the loop on my pack and I can hang it from a tree and then I can get everything out of my pack. And it just makes life much simpler for me. So I like carrying it. Let me stop right there. Hey, you paying attention? Yeah, you right there, you paying attention? I surely hope so, because I just went through the entire contents of my backpack on the inside, and you missed it. I ran out of storage space on my phone, because I store too many pictures. So, I'm going to continue now. This is my mat that I keep under my hammock. I got this from Dutch at DutchWearGear.com. It comes in three foot length on a roll, and I just bought four feet of it, so it's three by four. I keep it under my hammock so I can lay my backpack on it, change clothes on it, that sort of thing. And if I ever have to go to ground, which uh, I hope I don't have to, I can lay this on the ground. Next item is my bear bag. For my bear bag kit. This is 40 feet of loss in the glow wire. It's black and it's got tracers in it. Uh, when you shine a flashlight on this, it's like a Christmas tree lighting up. So that's that. So now I'm going back to the inside of the pack for the second time. This is my food bag, and I already emptied the food bag. From my trip, but this is Cuban fiber. Very lightweight material. They make tarps out of this these days. Um, holds a ton of food. Probably more than I'll ever eat in a weekend. But uh, it's lightweight. <clears throat> has a roll top on it. I think I paid $25 from this Z, from zpacks.com. And I really like it. Yeah. This is my toiletries kit. And I'm sure you can guess what this is for. I carry some toilet paper, not the whole roll, just a little bit of it for a weekend, whatever I might need. Carry some wet wipes. This is my toothbrush toothpaste. Carry a little travel size toothpaste, or toothbrush, sorry. A uh, little container, just put a little dollop of toothpaste in there. I've got some camp soap for whatever cleaning up my dishes if I need to. And I carry a little bottle, uh, tube of skin lube. And this is Gold Bond. The last one here, I got a little trowel. It's made of metal, I could probably climb a lighter wider one but I picked this up and I've been carrying it ever since so just for digging a cat hole you know I don't need to describe it this is my 
this is my hydration bag. And I used to carry a uh, hydration bladder in the pack with a little tube that runs out the end here. I don't like sucking on the tube, for one. Um, it was nice to have because I, I drank more when I had the hydration bladder. But it was just kind of a pain to get in the pack and fill the bag when you needed to. It had to loosen everything up, move some things out of the way to get water in it. Um, but I like having this for a gravity feed bag. I hang this up in camp or wherever. And I've got the tube here. It's got fittings that connect to the bottom of the bag. And then this end goes to my Sawyer squeeze water filter. And I just connect it on the end and it hangs like that. It's got a spout on here. And I just recently found out that the spout on the Sawyer filter will actually fit into the nipple on these smart water bottles. It just locks right in. You have to loosen the cap a little bit to let the air out, but once you do, it flows really well. I used it this past weekend that way, and it worked great for me. So that's kind of neat. The other thing I carry in here is a plastic Ziploc bag. The opening on the uh, platypus bag here is kind of small, so I use this to scoop out water, and then I'll take my bandana put it inside that bag and pour the water over that. The bandana catches any like loose sediment or whatever. And then the filter will filter out the rest. The other thing I carry is the plunger to back flush my filter. I've never really needed to back flush it in the field. I don't know why I'm carrying it. I don't really need to, but I just threw it in the bag. And the last thing in here is I just carry an extra one liter platypus bag to carry clean water in. If there's a water shortage, you know, and I need to carry a lot of water, I have an extra bag to carry it. This is my emergency kit slash fire kit slash first aid kit. I just keep everything in this bag here. First item is we hike every now and then in, in hunting areas and in wildlife management areas and, you know, I don't want to get shot. This is my uh, fire kit. <clears throat> and here I've got some dryer lamp, cotton balls, soaking Vaseline, carry an extra lighter in here and I've got some waterproof matches here. And then my first aid kit, I'm not going to go through the whole contents, but it's basic first, first aid kit that I threw together. Mostly I'm just getting ibuprofen out of it. I have my whistle in here as well for emergency. And that's that. Next item is my hammock. And this one I just made probably about two months ago. Uh, I wanted an 11 foot hammock. And so I ordered some Argon 1.6 from Dutch at DutchRigGear.com, as well as some other materials. Um, love this hammock. I made it 54 inches wide, which to me is perfect width. It has a bug net, integrated bug net on it that zips all the way off, stows in the foot end. I made a stuff sack in the foot end that you can go without the net if you want. I like an integrated net. Uh, I've got one four foot strap, tree strap, and one five foot tree strap in here. Uh, each of them have a Dutch clip on it. And I also use toggles to hang uh, my Diamond Glide Whoopies on a Marlin Spike Hitch. And if you need to know any of that, you can go to hammockforums.net and everything you want to know about hammocks is there. And I highly recommend it. But love my hammock. I also have a 10 footer too, which I love. It's made out of 1.1 nylon. This one's 23 ounces. The 1.1 hammock, I think, is around 19 ounces with the same suspension dining glide whoopies. And uh, I'll use them both. I love them both. This is my clothes bag. <clears throat> and I keep a couple items in here besides clothes just because 
it's down in the compactor bag, and that's another thing. I have this compactor bag in the bottom for things I don't want to get wet. My down quilts, my clothes, uh, anything I don't want to get wet, I keep in this plastic trash compactor bag. And then I just kind of cinch it up and roll it down inside itself. Um, it's not going to be completely waterproof if the backpack is submerged, but if you're in a heavy rain or, you know, you drop your pack in a puddle, it's just going to save you some time to, you know, get it out or whatever without wetting her down. First item in my clothes bag is this is I keep in here. This is my lantern. This is a Coleman Micro Lantern. I've had this for quite a few years. I love this lantern. It's a comfort item, it's not necessary, but I usually hang it from my hand, I ridge line on my tarp. And for one thing, I can find my way back to my hammock easier. I have a candle lantern, which would be fine. It's a little lighter, but this lights up the hole underneath of my tarp in my camp area. And it weighs, I think, six, six point something ounces with the batteries, so it's not terribly heavy. And I just like having it with me. I keep carrying it. This is my camp towel. This is my RAV power that I just recently picked up because I've gone to using my phone for everything, taking video, pictures, whatever. And so I wanted a way to be able to charge my phone on the field. I was carrying a camera, but I like the video quality and sound and pictures better off my iPhone. I think it does a better job. And as a matter of fact, that's what I'm recording with now. These are my sleep socks, just a pair of uh, wool socks. I guess the company name is Woolridge. I just use them to sleep in. They're kind of warm. And going back to what I wear hiking, these are my hiking socks. And they're made by Starter. I probably got them at Walmart, Target. I've tried to find them again because I've had them several years and I had three pair. One pair got a hole in them, I had to toss them out, I still have two pair. I carry three pairs of socks. I carry these I'm wearing. I carry an extra pair of these and then I have my sleep socks. There's the other pair. This is my beanie. I got this, uh, this is an underground quilts beanie. I actually won this at a Florida hang. These are my gloves. I like fingerless gloves. And these were fishing, you know, I had this in my fishing kit, but I've got another pair. And I just took this pair out to put in my hiking gear. They're, uh, they're made by Buff, or Buff Glove and they've got like a grip on the hand and I like my finger being exposed so I can still do things but still keep my like wrist and my hands warm. This is my lightweight uh, base layer of sleepwear basically is what I do. I sleep in this. Uh, I had a friend that can get military clothing and he got these for me. Uh, this is a lightweight base layer shirt. I believe it's some kind of polyester. Uh, very nice, very warm. Kind of zips down halfway in the, in the front. Um, I really like that. I've slept in this. I slept in it over the weekend. One night. I didn't need to the other night. It was, kind of, it was a little warm for it, so I took it off. And these are the bottoms. That's it for my clothing bag. Next thing up is this is my top quilt. This is a top quilt I made. It's made out of 1.1 uh, ripstop nylon. And it's got baffles in it, chambers. And there's seven ounces of down. And it's got a rating of about 40 degrees. I've taken it lower than that. Um, I wouldn't push it much past, you know, 
high thirties maybe. You know, if that's the case, then I'll put on my down jacket to try to, you know, supplement my quilts. But uh, you can make a foot box. I've got Velcro here on both sides. You just Velcro it together. It goes up about 18, 20 inches. And then I tie it off here. And then you can uh, cinch up the end. Basically, you stick your feet down inside. And if it's really cold, you know, I'll take my down jacket and wrap my feet around, you know, wrap my feet in the down jacket or I'll have a pad underneath there. Usually I just wrap my down jacket. But uh, you just lay it over top of you like a blanket. This is my pillow. And again, probably another luxury item. It only weighs three ounces. But I wanted a floor to hang. And uh, it's perfect size. It's an Arrowhead Equipment Snoring Cub Pillow. They make a little bigger one. But to me, this is perfect. It's got a little clip on it. I clip it on my ridge line. And I just, just enough to go right behind my neck, my head, so that I got a pillow. And I love having it. This is my down jacket. And this is one piece of gear that I really love. Somebody posted on Hammer Forums that JC Penny was doing a clearance on these puffer jackets. It's 650 fill down. And man, I'm telling you, I've had it in, in 32 degrees freezing weather and had this on you know, with my long sleeve shirt, and I've been warm. Um, it's been great, I love it. I usually keep it floating around inside my hammock at night in case I get cold somewhere. I mean, if I get cold enough, I can put it on. Sometimes I've used it as an extra blanket, you know, just put my arms through it and then have my top coat over top of that. Uh, I'll wrap, wrap it around my feet if my feet are cold. Um, I can stick it up under my butt if I'm, you know, my butt starts getting cold or something. So, I just, good all around piece of gear and I love it. And I think this is the last thing in there. And this is my other quilt. And if you're a hammock camper, you know what an under quilt is. This is a hammock gear phoenix. It's rated to 40 degrees. I'm not sure how many ounces of down is in that on the website, but um, it's got a designated head and foot end because the head end is wider at the shoulders and narrower at the foot. And this is probably my favorite piece of gear. I can't tell you how happy I've been. It's got these baffles at the head and foot end that cinch up around the hammock. And when you sense that up, it just doesn't allow the air in. And it seals around the hammock very well. I've been totally happy with it. And I will keep buying quilts from hammock here. And that's everything in the pack. Um, I'm not an ultralight camper, a hiker. I'm probably lightweight. Ultralight would be 10 pounds or less. My pack, my base weight is 15 and a half pounds. And base weight, if you're not familiar with that term, is everything minus your consumables. Your consumables would be fuel, water, and food. When you're hiking and eating, you're, the consumables are you're consuming food, so you're taking weight off. So that's not included in your base weight. Uh, base weight is everything that you're going to be carrying throughout the trip. It's not going to change. It's going to stay the same. It's going to stay constant. But fuel and food and water, you will lose, and you will lose weight uh, of that. Uh, this pack, ULA recommends 12-pound base weight and 30-pound max load. I can get away with this without having 12-pound base weight because my total load is not going to exceed 25 pounds. 
with full load of food for a weekend and water, I'm, I'm around 23 pounds. And I'm very happy with that. My pack weight, base weight will fluctuate between 15 and around 18 pounds, depending on what I carry. And I'll go over some items that go in and out of the pack, depending on luxury items that I want to carry or whether I, I carry a few extra things and that will kick my base weight up a little bit. I'm not really concerned about it. I'm never going to be sub 10 pounds. My philosophy on the whole thing is I'm going out there to enjoy myself. If I got to go out there and kick my own rear end because I'm trying to save a little weight, it's not, that's not fun to me. I want to have a few luxury items and so I'm going to be happy. I, I might bring my weight down a little bit, but I'm probably going to be 13, 14 ish. And I'm totally happy with that. I'm happy with my gear now. There's some things I can do to lose a little weight on here. And I'll probably strive to do that. But for now, I'm totally pleased with my gear. I'm totally pleased with my pack. And with that, I'll move on to the items that I'll switch in and out of. I'm going to finish up by talking about some gear that go in and out of my pack depending on the trip. One thing I neglected going through the pack because it was actually in the side pocket next to my cook kit and fell down and I obviously didn't see it. This is my little camera gear bag. For one, it carries the, cam the phone holder that I'm recording with right now so I can't show you that, but I did a video on my camera gear and you can watch that if, if you want to know about all this stuff. But I carry that in the bag. This little ultrapod <clears throat> makes a little tripod, velcro you can wrap around a tree, whatever, take pictures with. And then I have this little uh, shutter remote so I can, uh, it works off Bluetooth, I can take pictures from a distance with my phone. And then the stuff sack, the whole stuff sack with everything in it is four ounces. The gear that go in and out of my pack depending on the trip. And you probably see me sitting on this throughout the whole video. This is my Jackson Butter Stool. I just got this. It went on me, went with me on the trip over the weekend. And this chair fits perfectly over the own backpack. It goes right over the top, down through the loops on the outside and into the pockets. And it just made perfect for it to me. I didn't know this when I ordered it, but this chair is made by Stan Sport. And I believe Shug talks about this in his video. And I didn't know the Jacks are better stool was a stand, actually a stand sports stool. But I recommend that you support our cottage, cottage vendors and buy this from Jacks are better. Um, our cottage vendors go a long way in providing quality gear to us as hammockers. So I recommend supporting all of them, especially the ones I've mentioned in this video. Four Bonnet Outdoors, Hammock Gear, Arrowhead Equipment underground quilts, and I'm sure there's a few others that I mentioned. If I'm missing anybody, I apologize. I'll post links if I can remember it. I'll post links to each one of the sites, the gear that I got. I also bought some of the materials for uh, the gear that I made, my hammocks and quilts from Scott at DIYGearsupply.com, and all of them have been great. I ordered this stool. I had it in less than four days. So all of those guys are small businesses and they can use the support of the entire hammock community. So I recommend supporting them. The other thing that will go with me, and I pack depending on weather. If the weather is going to be, say, 40s, I try to plan for it to be colder than that out in the woods. You can get the weather from a nearby town, but let me tell you, out when you're out in the woods, it could be up to five or six degrees colder out there. So if the weather's calling for 45, I'm gonna plan for somewhere around 35 to 40. And if I think the weather's gonna be anywhere around 40 or below, I carry these little booties. I've had issues with cold feet. A lot of it's from wearing socks too, that are too tight. But if you've got cold feet in the hammock, you're going to be miserable. They make down booties. You can buy down booties. They're a little pricey. But Joann's was running a sale on fleece, and it was 50% off. So I found some camo fleece. I bought about three yards of it. I came home, 
decided that I was going to make some booties. Made a couple of prototypes that didn't work. The first pair I couldn't even get on, they were so small. The second pair I got them on, but they were really tight. I was trying to freehand draw it. I wound up just taking a sock and leaving about three inches around the perimeter and just screw that out. And then I wound up with these very loose fitting. And I used half inch batting. I just made two templates, put the batting in between it, sandwiched it together and sewed it all together. And they came out really well. And I love these booties when it's cold out. I can put these over my feet in the hammock and my feet are actually really warm. I had enough left over that I made a lot of clava. And I'll probably make another one because this is a little tight when I put it on. It's the reason I don't like wearing it a lot, so I don't take it a lot. But sometimes I do take it as cold, even though it's tight. I'll, I'll use it if I have to. But uh, those are two items that will go if it's, you know, if the weather's going to get really cold below 40. The other item that will go with me, depending on the trip, again, the same friend that gave me the sleepwear that I showed you in the video, those are lightweight. He also gave me these and they're kind of midweight and I've not slept in these yet, but they're really heavy. The difference in weight, the lightweights, the pants are around uh, five ounces and the shirt is about seven and a half ounces. The midweights here, these pants are nine ounces and this shirt here, which is a pretty beefy shirt, has a turtleneck and everything, another half zip. Looks like it's going to be very warm. This is 12 and a half ounces. So if, I, again, I think the weather's going to be 40 below, or 40 or below that, you know, I'm going to take these. And then I'll just swap them out for the lightweights. I won't take the lightweights, I'll take these. It'll add a little more weight, but they'll be much warmer. And the last thing here is, again, if it's going to be really cold, and I think my quilt's not going to handle it, I have this fleece sleeping bag liner that I can toss in the backpack. But if it's going to be really cold and I think I need it, I'll throw it in the pack. So that, that will come sometimes on a trip if necessary. And that's everything. I know the video's been kind of long. But trust me, it's been a whole lot longer for me than it has been for you, going through it twice. But uh, I hope you got something out of it. If you have any questions or comments, you can post them below on YouTube, or I'll post this on Hammock Forums. You can post the comments if you want to critique my gear in any way, or have a better idea, or what, whatever, let me know. I'm always open to ideas. I think that's the best part about the hammock community, we share ideas. I learn a lot of things from other guys and hammock forums. I spend a lot of time on there. I've learned a lot in the last three and a half, four years I've been on there and I'm still learning. So I hope you guys got something out of this video and uh, happy trails.